Hello, this is Techman88, and here is what I call the fish fountain, because it shoots up the fish, and they bounce around, and then they die, and they get collected. And it is also fish-powered, because there's a minecart which is pushed by fish. This definitely won't be the most efficient design. I know there's some really great designs out there, but really, how much fish do you need? This farm right here, just based on a brief test, makes about a thousand fish per hour. So that should definitely cover your eating needs if you eat fish, which is actually a pretty good food source. Since fish seems to be so easy to farm, I, I think the you just want to have something entertaining because the only reason you're playing Minecraft is to be entertained. And this is very easy and kind of entertaining because the fish just bounce all around until they die. Something that changed kind of recently since the snapshots of 1.13 and the official release is that fish now can't spawn in bubble columns. So you can't just set up a bunch of soul sand and expect the fish to spawn and then float to the top. What happens in this farm is that the fish will spawn in these higher columns of water. And They'll try and swim somewhere, and the only place they can swim is into this bubble column. They might try and swim over here, but then, again, the only place they can swim into the, is into the bubble column. So the fish is pretty much guaranteed to get propelled upwards pretty quickly. This is an unconventional way to collect items. So there's a rail going around, and it's not powered. As I was saying earlier, this is fish-powered. So the minecart is, is occasionally just nudged a little bit by these fish or pushed pretty hard. And when that happens, it goes around this track and it can pick up all these items. Even the items that are pushed against these glass panes. Because the hopper minecart has a pretty big range where it can pick up items. You can see it kind of going now. It sometimes has trouble making it all around but it should eventually pick up most of these items. And then there's basically the standard unloading system, except that it's not put off the track, it's just on the same track, and that's actually a whole lot more reliable than if you if you like try and split off the track and have it go around and come back. Because the fish can bump it and stuff, and it'll get into like kind of an intermediate state where it it can't go each any direction. So that's just a, a hopper back here and powered rail on top and then a comparator. This is a standard arrangement. Comparator goes into a block which powers a redstone and that goes into a repeater and then powers a block which powers the, uh, the powered rail. So that's standard and I wouldn't recommend trying it a different way because it'll get stuck sometime. You don't have to use slime blocks. The slime blocks I think are just more fun because the fish bounce around like crazy, but you can use magma blocks and you can also just use stone or something. Here it is with stone. And they they kind of just they bounce around a lot more. They do tend to block the minecart a lot more than with the slime or with the magma block. But it does work. And you don't actually need this unloading setup here at all. You can just come in and uh, empty the hopper minecart manually. It will, it should fill pretty well. Just like this is over a ri uh, river biome, so it's only gonna spawn salmon. So it should stack pretty well in that minecart. You'll get a couple of bone meal too. But I think the slime is the funniest and efficient enough that you won't be thinking you should have built it out of some other material. Just a quick tutorial on how to build this. So the first thing you want to do, like, you can build this in a river biome. I think that's probably where you want to build it. Uh, so you want to make sure that there's a 4x4 area that's all river biome, because in any other biome, the salmon won't spawn. And this is going to be a 2x2 two two water column. The one I showed a bit earlier was a 3x3 three three water column, but I think you'll be just as fine with a 2x2 two two water column and the 4 wide design. But you have to be absolutely sure that this is within a river biome. 
The next thing you'll want to do is come over these diagonal corners up here. And then you want to build a tower up to some uh, height like 192 or above. And then you want to build these two pieces here. Next what you want to do is to put water blocks above these two diagonal things which are straight above the middle of that uh, that platform I put in the middle of the river. And what this will do is fill in a 4x4 area which we can then use to put in the, uh, the kelp to actually make the source blocks. So then uh, that's important you gotta remove these two blocks so that all four columns are made. Then what you do is you build these kelp columns all the way up. I'm in survival now and what I think is the easiest way to do this is to go inside these bubble columns. And actually, I might have been wrong about doing two at a time. I think you should be good just doing one. And what this is doing, it is creating source blocks on all the kelp blocks. So once you got one done, you can just break these kelp blocks. And then you can collect them, and then you can use them on the next one. So if you filled all four kelp columns at a time, you would get something that looks like this. So there's source blocks going all the way down, which will later be bubble columns. And then there's these, uh, these two things on the side, which are down flowing water where the fish will spawn and they'll swim in. So of course, the next thing you would do is break these four kelp plants. And then you would put soul sand in these four blocks. And there you have it. There's your water columns. It's very easy. The kelp is really easy to get. Go to an ocean biome and just harvest it like crazy. You'll get tons and tons of it. Now what you want to do is you have this platform up here that you should have built already. Uh, to drop the water. Then you want to build a platform around these bubble columns. Then you'll just place some rails onto that. Then you put a hopper minecart there. And at this point it's actually done. You're going to get fish with this setup right here. can see they're kind of coming in and bouncing around and eventually they'll push the minecart and you'll get some fish drops. But to increase the efficiency a little bit, one thing you'll do is put some stone around here because when they drop back down into the water from like way up here, they might bounce down to this position and then they can swim out and get stuck kind of under there. But this helps them not get stuck. So already within like a minute or two of building this, there's already some fish drops in this minecart hopper. And you could just come up here, like have a platform over here and just come up and get them out of there. But you will notice a bunch of fish just falling out of this thing. So what you do is just build another layer around here. And then on top of that you can probably put fence gates or whatever, but I'll just use panes. I finished building up the glass panes and I also added a structure around it. And these vertical columns right here are actually important. They will prevent 
s uh, the drops from falling way out into the corner, which the mine uh, the mine cart with the hopper can't pick up. And you can build this up higher, of course, if you want the fish to bounce higher. That might be what you want to do. I just replaced the slime blocks in that design I just built with mangle blocks, and I don't know, they might work okay, but I think the slime blocks are probably what you want to use. They seem to just bounce a whole, around a whole lot more and push the mine cart more. And you may not have powered rails at the beginning, so the, uh, the regular rails might just be fine. But I think that will do it for this video, so thank you for watching and goodbye.